Sometimes people come to our class to show us the behaviors that they have trained their bird, only to be surprised that it turns out their bird was training them. Today I'm working with Joyce and her blue and gold macaw, Pablo, who's 11 years old. I began by having Joyce walk me through the different behaviors that Pablo knew how to do. Target. Now just the first thing I'd clean up, and this is a common mistake, uh -huh. you've just done the behavior of target, yeah. but then you still have the target in while yeah. you're doing the tree. I keep trying to tell myself to put the target away. Yeah, it's a, it, that's a super common one. Yeah. But Using well, the other yeah. hand for the treat is the quickest, easiest mm -hmm. solution. Spin. Nice. Yay. Cool. Wave. <laughs> so many people like watching. A little Wait. stage fright. Okay. Usually does a little higher, but. Okay. Something on the wave on this next one. Mm -hmm. um, do you normally treat when his foot's still up? I target, and then sometimes he's a little slow getting it back down, but I'll still. What do you mean by target? Or as in like a, when I click it. Oh, okay. So you'll, so so you'll like it. usually lift it up slow, I click it, then sometimes a little slow putting it right back down. Okay, so something you can do is if he's still, like the behavior we want is a wave and then back down. Mm -hmm. But when we click, we're really capturing that, that exact moment. We're marking that exact moment of that height, right? So. What you want though is to have him know to put his foot down to get the reinforcement. So I would offer it over here. So he has to put the foot down to lean that way to get the treat. And he can't get the treat until that foot's down. So if that's the new criteria that we're measuring, that wave, <laughs> that wave will be less of a just hold it up and it'll be, oh, I go here and then put it down. And you'll start to so, associate that. So I'd click when it's still up, but give the reward. Over yeah, so I would give the treat there, right? Cause okay. you put the foot down. So change something about where you stand or where the treat's going to get the behavior you want, which is for his foot to go back to down. Get it. Get it. He does wings too, but I don't know if he's Wings? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Those aren't all the way. It's like his little weak wings. Wings? It's like winding up to it or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was picturing too. Cracking the wings up. <laughs> Didn't it seem like that? And I got so confused because the, the cues weren't very clear. Like all the masterclass sessions, I said, just show me five somethings. And I couldn't tell what the cue was. Wings. 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 Click. Nice. Wings. So right there, it was just a little unclear to him if he deserved uh -huh. the treat. You see him reach for it. Mm -hmm. So the difference between just kind of like reminding him there's a yeah. paycheck. That, that one I actually went to. I think there's something else with your body language that is the cue. Mm -hmm. So what you're thinking the cues are aren't the cues. Okay. So that's where I'm like trying to understand, you know, how do you get the, the yeah, wings? Yeah, throwing a it. bunch of things, seeing, knowing what he's actually picking up on. One of the reasons I couldn't tell what the cue was, was that Joyce was reinforcing for all sorts of behavior, but it was after Pablo would cue her to do the behavior. So I don't know how to say that it was trained or not trained, but Pablo had definitely trained Joyce to do all the same behaviors that she wanted from him. So a lot of what I'm seeing here is he's like offering you behaviors mm -hmm. and then you're also re-cueing them. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're looking at, let's say you're getting your show ready for a theme park and it yeah. needs to be crystal clean, mm -hmm. then I would isolate every behavior and make it where it's happening every time when you ask it, as mm -hmm. opposed to him giving subtle clues that he wants yeah. to do that. Because mm -hmm. that, that to me looked like, I mean, it's, it's yeah. cute behavior. Yeah. Um, and I don't doubt that it's on cue, but right mm -hmm. there, he was like, I want a reward for this because yeah. The criteria of wings was just a little beyond yeah. his comfort zone. It depends because there's times like most, more often than not, when I do a training session, he'll do everything like back to back perfect. Okay. And then other times, like again, it's new environment, so he's like a little more yeah. shut down. Sometimes. So especially in an environment like this where he's not hitting that max potential, mm -hmm. uh, you need to basically think of it as retraining from the beginning. Yeah. So how far is he willing to lift his wings? 
-hmm. And if it's only this far, let's start there. Yeah. And then let's treat it like a new training session. Okay. So like in arenas, we could have Jinx do a circle and fly back and land on me. But the mm -hmm. second we added people, it was a whole different behavior. Yeah. So we had to train them every show with a slightly different approximation until we got the final behavior that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Even though he was fully capable of it, the element of an audience made it seem like a new trick. Well, I wanted to fix this. I wanted to get Joyce to become kind of that next level trainer that we talk about. And this goes back to all the foundational training of just making sure that your cue is matched with a behavior that's followed up with a reward. And having that be crystal clear so there's no confusion between you and the bird with what you're asking. Spin. And then I would go for a wings here when he's when he looks ready. Wings. Yeah, go for it. One of the behaviors that was super cute was wings up. And the thing that I loved was that Pablo would like wind up and then the wings would go up. But I couldn't tell what the criteria was. Are the wings supposed to be all the way out or is it the wind up and like a little bit out like this? So when I pried further and I asked Joyce, what's the cue? I don't know, there was a lot of different stories, but I never found out what the cue was. And then Jamie finally pointed out, there was no cue. So right now we're about to take this great behavior, we're gonna try to get the bird into a begging phase so that we can start to assign a cue. So just a treat. So now if he does that approximation again, no treat, no click. Okay. We need it to be better. Yeah. But that was like, he's, he's starting to associate it. So we want to continue to encourage that. Thanks. Okay, so step back a second. He lost the opportunity to earn that treat. Now he's gonna think about why didn't I get it that time? I shook my head. What in the world's going on? I'm gonna offer this because usually you cue me back and I get a treat. All right, step back in, offer the cue again. I'm gonna try Thanks. harder this time. Treat. Can you see how allowing that failure made him try mm -hmm. harder that next time? Mm -hmm. The reason I clicked is that going back the previous approximation was a fail and we mm -hmm. want to tell him like more in this direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's that or higher, but we're not clicking for less. The first thing that we all noticed during this attempt to get the wings up was that her hand would move forward ever so slightly with a treat in it. Now, was she luring the bird to try to offer a treat? Or had that accidentally become the cue? And it's the latter, of course. It had actually become the cue. So now we wanted to use that cue. In other words, we wanted to start with what was working. Now, having your hand forward slightly is not the best cue for this behavior, but we can change all that later. Right now, the goal is let's see if we can get Pablo to do the wings, and then we want to set the criteria higher and higher and higher, so rather than just putting the wings slightly up, we wanna get full extension on the wings, clicking at the top moment, getting the best behavior we can. And then again, we'll change the cue later. The other thing I would do is I would start to exaggerate your cue more where it's like very, cause you, you, you wait here and he's like, when's the treat coming? So rather than the cue being here, I would exaggerate it a little bit more this time so that the cue can eventually be like wings or we can change from here, we can change it to like this, we can do whatever, but slowly start to exaggerate that a little bit. Wings. Okay. Wings. Quick. Nice. Looked great. Yeah, so let's let's throw in, I don't know if we can get five more reps or not. Typically, I'd probably end the session there at home. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a great note, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. But let's see if we can just go to burnout here since we're in a master class and we're gonna get as much as we can. Please. Clicker timing is critical when you are working through behavior like this. Pablo still doesn't really understand that moving the hand forward slightly is the cue with 100% certainty. He's pretty confident, but he doesn't know it for sure. And we're really trying to gain repetition and confidence through the pattern of when I put my hand forward, your wings go up, you get a click and a treat. But here's where we have to be careful. He would often put his wings up, and then by the time his wings were lower, almost at a second version of the wings out, 
That's where he was getting the click. Wings. Yeah, go for it. Good job. I was like, ah. <laughs> So that's what I was saying before you came up for this rep is make sure that once the criteria is set at a certain distance, we're not clicking for lesser yeah. degrees. So that was a lot less. Okay. And the criteria now is like full extension, boom, click at that exact moment where the wings are out. Mm -hmm. Where that one, he did it, so I'd give a treat. But the click is yeah, is like, you're taking a picture of the exact thing you want to see more of. Mm -hmm. And since he, he lessened the criteria, I wouldn't have clicked there. Thanks. And no treat. Mm -hmm. And just kind of wait 15, 20 seconds. You see the anticipation build. As you come back, he's going to try a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and start to step forward and go ahead and ease in the cue. Wings. Cool. So watch that clicker timing, bit. right? Yeah, yeah. But could you see how allowing the failure uh -huh. made him think about his decisions in life and come back trying harder? Remember that the click is the mark of the exact moment you want to see more of. Or specifically, it's on the trajectory towards where we want to go. And since the criteria had been, let's say, put the wings here, we want to make sure that we're clicking and treating for this or better. Whereas what was happening here and causing a little more confusion for Pablo was sometimes he'd get the click here, sometimes he'd get the click here. Wings. Oh, nice. That was beautiful. And the fact we clicked at the same time is tell me you're seeing the same thing as I am. Mm -hmm. So that's the new criteria. Okay. And we really need to get that. Mm -hmm. And now you know what your cue is. Paying attention so be careful, you just cued them three times. <laughs> right? So that but those are important details yeah. to know. Like it the way you step back, that's a good reaction. So when mm -hmm. I'm not in the bubble, I can yeah. gesture, I can do whatever, but the moment okay. the yeah. he thinks you're engaged, we have to really watch what those hand motions are. Mm -hmm. By the end of this trading interaction, you could see that Joyce was actually able to successfully click for the most perfect, if that's proper English or not, don't care. She was able to click for the best part of that repetition. And it tells me that she's really on track to be able to get that particular behavior really dialed in. Now, I'll be honest, it's not going to happen just in one masterclass in most situations. She will need to go home and really focus on that clicker timing. But I do want to give a little disclaimer here and offer Joyce a little bit of credit. It's going to be really easy for all of you watching this right now. And you may have already put in the comments like, oh, I can't believe she's clicking late. It's easy to keyboard warrior this. And it's even easier when you're watching from the outside, which is the benefit of a masterclass is there's all these eyes saying, oh, you know what? And this is so cool. People around the class were able to say, oh, it was when your hand went forward. Oh, that wing wasn't coming up all the way. This would, and they could chime in to what was happening so Joyce could really just focus on the session because that's what really mattered. So the takeaway from that is when you're doing training sessions at home, the best tool you can use is somebody as an outside eye and that somebody that you can trust all the time is going to be your video camera. Set up your video camera, set up your phone, I would recommend in slow motion if you can, so you can always slow it down and find, what did I really click for? Did I click for the bird landing on my hand or did I click for the bird landing, moving, and then biting on accident? Whatever training you're doing, I strongly suggest filming it, but more importantly, watching it back and being honest in the critiques that you have for yourself. Because like I said, we could all watch this video from today and say, oh, that was horrible. Why didn't she click at the right spot? and it's easy to get lost in that moment. I experience it, Jamie experiences it, and everybody that's been to a masterclass or trained a bird has experienced getting lost in that moment, and sometimes it takes that outside eye to be able to see what else is happening that we may or may not be intentionally capturing. If you got any value from this masterclass, I would love to invite you out to Sandpoint, Idaho for 2024 and 2025, where all of our masterclasses will be held. If you're interested in coming, email us right now at info at birdtricks.com.